Why are the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer? It seems like the economy in America is poised to help only the rich, as the poor are struggling to afford a decent living. Finance analyst Patrick Ben David, in fact, is also of the similar opinion about the American economy. If you're a citizen of America, then you're sure to have come across challenges in your day-to-day -day living. In fact, the past few years, beginning from the days of COVID-19, the American economy has been under tremendous pressure, and this, in fact, has led to ordinary citizens struggling to meet their basic needs. Now, financial analyst Patrick Bet Davis is also warning everyone that the coming days are going to be even tougher for the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy has always been an evolving one, defined by its capacity for innovation, adaptation, and global leadership. But in recent times, it's run into a unique set of opportunities and difficulties that call for more study. First off, it's impressive to see how strong the U.S. economy is. Even in the face of extraordinary shocks like the COVID-19 pandemic, the economy has proven exceptionally strong. You know as countrymen of this economy how much the world looks at the U.S. and its development model. The entrepreneurial spirit that drives productivity and innovation is the foundation of this adaptation. U.S. entrepreneurs are always pushing the envelope, generating jobs and boosting the economy, whether they're running small enterprises nationwide or venture capital firms in Silicon Valley. The strength and energy of the American economy have long made it a pillar of global financial stability. Even in the face of occasional failures, it's continuously shown that it's capable of evolving and adapting. But Patrick Bet Davis says the American economy right now is under a bubble and that this can break at any point, leading to disastrous outcomes, leaving the ordinary citizens helpless. He says that the policies that the American government has come up post the COVID-19 are also not helping boost the economy. In reality, what all of you are going to face in the coming days is something big. This means your chances of being unemployed are much higher. If the recession is going to kick off in the upcoming days, then well, this would mean the bubble is slowly on its way to burst out completely, leaving everyone helpless. Howard Marks says the US economy is doomed. Recently, the co-founder of Oak Tree Capital Management issued a dire warning of the U.S. economy following the release of data showing that the country's national debt was over $34.5 trillion. Everyone following the U.S. economy knows Howard Marks. A few days back, Marks issued a warning statement. This environment of very low skepticism isn't a climate of safety and absolute returns. Howard remarked that when prices are low, investment is a great way to make enormous easy money. While this isn't the case for the U.S. market right now, there have been notable declines in a number of markets recently, including the Indian market, which some analysts believe may have made it more favorable for stock selection. The American financial manager and self-made millionaire who oversees more than $100 billion at his company Oak Tree Capital hasn't forecast a collapse in the U.S. market anytime soon. According to him, the U.S. economy is already in its 10th year of a bull run, and during this time, freshly hired fund managers haven't witnessed a significant decline. It's important to note that no one who has entered the market in almost a decade has ever witnessed a bear market, a particularly terrible year, or declines that didn't immediately recover. Being an investor right now means you're ready to face any result in the market. Don't you agree with that? If you're an investor or trader, you may know that the good run with U.S. stocks has been almost over since the past few years, and now, whatever returns you get are not worth the risk. Some of you may have noticed the S&P 500 fell almost 4% in the first few weeks of April 2024 after hitting a new record high in late March of that year. Even if the S&P 500 is still up for the year, investor enthusiasm for stocks in April seems to be tempered by concerns about when the Federal Reserve would decrease interest rates. IT technology and communication services firms outperformed the majority of the S&P 500 during the entirety of 2023 and the first few months of 2024. Companies that are insensitive to continuously increasing interest rates are what kept pushing the markets to new highs. Changes in the interest rate environment have little impact on large corporations with modest borrowing needs and large cash reserves such as NVIDIA, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. On the other hand, smaller businesses that frequently must borrow money or issue debt 
incur greater interest expenses. Consequently, in the first few months of 2024, small cap equities underperformed large cap stocks. The market continues to favor the information technology and communication services sector until mid-April, although industrial and financial equities are also doing well. If you notice, interest rate changes can affect the markets in both positive and negative ways. In reaction to changes in the economy, central banks frequently adjust their target interest rates, hiking them during periods of excessive economic expansion and reducing them during periods of economic contraction. Do you think low interest rates are affecting the U.S. economy? The economy grows relatively quickly during an expansion. Interest rates are often low and output rises. Employment and salaries, two growth-related economic indicators, fluctuate throughout the cycle as well. The U.S. economy is clearly demonstrating this at this moment, don't you think so? You all know how economic cycles begin with easy money and favorable market developments brought on by stimulative rate cuts which then lower unexpected returns. This increases one's willingness to take on more danger. Many experts say this leads to foolish choices and ultimately investment losses. A time of dread, stringency, tight money and economic recession follows the losses. Eventually, this results in positive market changes easy money and rate reduction for stimulants. Lessons from previous eras of easy money typically go unheeded because they run against the obstacles of historical ignorance, the desire for financial gain, FOMO, and the cognitive dissonance that causes people to ignore facts that contradict their beliefs or perceived self-interest. Despite the possible repercussions, these factors are always sufficient to dissuade caution during periods of low interest rates. In recent times, the Federal Reserve poses the biggest risk to the soft landing of the economy. Bond yields are rising due to higher for longer interest rates, which are also causing the economy to falter. It seems like the Federal Reserve is under threat. The increase in longer term rates comes at the same time as other risks, such as rising gas costs, the start of student loan installments this week, the ongoing strike by auto workers, and the possibility of a government shutdown next month all of which could reduce consumer spending and stimulate the economy. In the upcoming months, car sales may decline as a result of the United Auto Workers' strike, which is currently in its third week with no end in sight. Furthermore, there's always a chance of a government shutdown, which was just avoided this past weekend due to the disarray surrounding the House of Representatives' leadership. After a successful summer driven by high consumer spending on travel, music tours and blockbuster movies, the economy is winding down. Goldman Sachs researchers believe that the economy expanded at a robust 3.5% annual rate during the July-September quarter last year. However, the significant increase in borrowing costs may make the economy slow down more severely. The yield on the 10-year Treasury increased from 3.3% in April 2023 to a 16-year high of 4.8% in April 2024. Seeing all these happenings, we all wish we had some magical and fallible guidance to break this pattern. Regrettably, it appears that the existing economic structure in America, and to be honest, other nations, is intentionally intended to keep people in rough conditions. You surely must be thinking of ways to survive these conditions and hoping that this doesn't repeat in the future. For a normal person, it's not as easy as pulling yourself up by your bootstraps to get out of financial difficulties. Recalling that this is a marathon, not a sprint, is the best advice. Don't try to solve all of these issues at once. You won't be able to. Rather, attempt to gradually chip away at them. Maybe you'll set aside a little more money for a slightly better pair of boots the next time you need them. Alternatively, you begin setting away a modest sum of money each month to help you pay for your subsequent little fix. Try not to spend any unexpected windfall, such as an inheritance or an unexpected bonus from work, impulsively. Determine whether there's a method to use wisely that will end up saving you money in the future. If you can, you should use the money you save in the future to make even greater savings. It's difficult to claw your way out of poverty. It requires a great deal of effort, selflessness, and let's be honest, a little bit of luck. Do you think in the coming days, the US economy will have a better growth rate? Do share your opinions on this in the comments section down below. For more interesting stories and updates, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon for notifications. Bye for now.